from the Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold. And uh, you know what they say about uh, curiosity killing off the feline population. Well, I was sitting around there a while ago thinking, you know, which is pretty dangerous for a redneck. And I got to thinking, uh, I've got this uh, thread micrometer here from Shars. And, uh, and well, you won't see the paper. But anyway, I've got this little thing, and I haven't necessarily used it in cutting a thread. And a lot of times when I cut a thread, well, I'll take a nut, and I'll check it to see if I'm about there, you know. And I guess, you know, that works, but I figured, what if I don't have a nut? And I, if I just use the thread micrometer, well, I'll make a good thread. So uh, I sort of did a, a double check on it today. And also I got to thinking about feeding straight in with the threading tool instead of using the compound at the 39, uh, 29 and a half degree a angle, just feeding straight in with the, you know, the cross feed until the end of the thread. So what I did was I got busy and I made this little thing right here. And, uh, and it, it's the thread, the nut screws on both ends. And I did one end using the compound, and I did the other end feeding it straight in. And that's pretty much what I'm going to show you. And we'll see how it all comes out from there. No Bubba joke. He's, uh, Bubba said it was too hot to do anything today. And uh, I, I agree with him. So this is just a little, hopefully very short video to, to show you what, uh, what I learned playing with the threads. Alright, let's get on with it. So, but anyway, I'm going to try making a, a half inch 13 thread, cut it on the lathe, and I'm just going to plunge in. I'm not going on the 29 degree stuff, I'm just going to plunge straight in with it just to see how it works out. So, I'm going to get it all set up, and I'll be back in a minute, and we'll get started. Now, when I decided I was going to go ahead and buy the book, I did an online search. You can get this thing from Walmart and Amazon and just about everybody that sells a book. I got it from Zorro. Now, yeah, I said Zorro. Not the gay blade of uh, movies and TV, but it, they spell their company name Z-O-R-O. -O, and they're somewhere here in Houston. I'm not sure where. But if I get online and order something before noon, it'll be at my house tomorrow afternoon sometime brown truck of happiness will just roll up there and drop that in your front door and so far I've never paid more than five dollars shipping and there's the book I ordered it one day there it was the next day so and it shows the, the measurements for um, a half 13 so that's what we're going to try to do and we're going to use the uh, the Shars um, thread uh, micrometers to do it so Y'all hang loose and we'll get started. All right, I got a piece of soft steel here, which I figure is uh, five eighths, and uh, and it's mild steel. It's, there's nothing wonderful about it. And I don't want to set it for threading yet because I haven't got it turned down to half inch. I can get the gears back together. Okay, so. That's what we're going to do. We're going to try the, uh, the turner down to a half inch, and then I'm just going to push straight in with the thread, no compound stuff or anything, and see how that comes out. I'm pretty sure I saw Bruce Whitman do that. So I'll be back in just a minute once I get her down to a half inch. Okay, so the book here says that uh, for a half 13, the basic effective diameter is 0 0.450 inches and it says the basic minor diameter of an external thread is 0 0.4056 so that's we're going to work on that when we get to 0 0.450 we're going to check it with a nut and then when we get to 0 0.4056 we'll check it again I'm I'm trying to see if I can just use that thread micrometer even without anything to check and see if the thread size is good. 
may it be uh, it could be something that an old redneck can't figure out you know but anyway let's see how fast this thing's going might be too fast I think I'll slow it down about one belt much still pretty fast, but I think I can handle that. Alright. Give me some tap oil. This is genuine Acme thread cutting oil. It's recommended by Wiley Coyote. Wiley likes it. I like it. But we're going to make a little scratch here. I'll run in about three thousandths. And... Well, that moves fast, doesn't it? I'm checking it out. I'm going down another belt notch. All right. We'll make a little cut and find out how good it is. comes along there pretty quick. Alright, let me get my thread gauge. Alright, I'll be back when I find a thread gauge. Okay, so there we go. I don't know if you can read that, but it should say 13 threads per inch. Anyway, I'm going to check it here. And it looks like 13 to me. <clears throat> I had the darn thing right here in the chip pan, which I guess is why I couldn't find it. But here we go again. Take a big cut. I'm pretty sure I saw... Mr. Whitman do this in uh, three cuts. That screws on it seems to have a reasonable fit. All right, let's measure it with this little fella here. See what it says. about 441 <clears throat> yeah by my measurements that's about 441 and it fits so I guess now I'll turn this thing around in here and uh, thread the other side using the uh, compound like you're supposed to and then maybe we'll take pictures of them and compare the two threads that, that could be a good way 
you all just hang loose a minute. Okay, this time we're going to cut the thread by feeding in with the compound with it set on 29 and a half degrees. And I'll be back after I double check that setting. Yes, it's set there, I guess. I should have just trusted myself once. Probably a perfect fit. Measure it. It's uh, 443, and I think that, that that fits pretty good. I'll run a little emery paper across it. done that I guess I can be reasonably sure that I can use that uh, threading micrometer to cut a thread without worrying about you know about whether or not it's going to fit even if I don't have a nut to check it with I don't have any of the wires I guess I ought to order them but thread micrometer ought to be just as good and a whole lot easier to hold than wires all right I will uh, wind this up and I'll take this thing and I'll cut it in half, I'll cut this in half, and then we can look at the, at the thread, shape of the threads, and see, well, I don't even have to cut it in half, we'll just look at the shape of the threads. I got the threading tool here. Alright, I think I can set it where you can see it. Well, somewhere here. There we go. Darn. Is he going to focus or not? I believe you can see though that it fits the thread gauge pretty darn good. Turn it over to the side that I did just the plunge cutting in. And, hmm. I guess it fits pretty good there too. Uh, I may have to look at this video from another angle. Let me put it in here. You, you focused good there, so put it in there. Run it around. You see what I'm saying? It looks like it's, it fits just fine in the thread gauge. Turn around the other way, and it looks like it fits just fine there too. So, hmm. all right. So either way seems to work. That's interesting. All right, we're gonna knock it off. These are the two threads that I cut. 
one the plunge cut, one the compound cut. The light on these uh, pictures done under USB microscope, the light's not exactly the same. It's, it's really hard to get them angled just right so the light will be the same. But you can see uh, what it looks like and so I guess draw your own conclusions from that and realize that the, the bolt may not be at exactly the same angle in, e in each picture. Like I say, it, it was hard to get it in exactly the same position when I turned it around from the other end. So, not that that means the threads run a different direction or anything, but it was just, maybe I had it sitting at 90 degrees in one spot and, and 85 degrees on when I turned it to the other side. So, who knows? Anyway, there you are.